this actually, you know what, I don't know if I've talked to you about this, but th there has been something I've discussed with a couple of my friends, uh, kind of with Team Four Star, and uh, as you know, I'm a pretty big fan of the show. I think it's actually, their their love of the fandom is the, the best kind of satire I think that show is a representation of, because obviously it's done by people that know the series in and out from all different angles, from the manga, Japanese dubs, <laughs> The little, the little conversations we've had for years, the in-jokes, problems, mm -hmm. they make fun of all of it. There's so many references to that, even other anime. So obviously it's done with love, and it really do these are done with people that know the show inside out. But sometimes I think for a lot of people it might be, honestly, their main representation of the show. Like I know some people that don't watch Dragon Ball as much, that they go back, they watch Team Four Star, and they get the main ideas that come across. Like for instance... They exaggerate certain things, like Goku being really dumb. Now, as we know, it's, it is an exaggeration, but I think some people will take that as a true representation of what the character is, if they're not as informed, you know, because apparently people that have gained enough popularity like Team Four Star, they are considered to be almost authorities now on these characters. But I think that can do some misrepresentation, like that, with that, for instance, it's kind of the biggest example, or, you know, but, but I don't know. Like, and there's the whole Krillin count thing and Gohan being super studious. You know, I don't know. Where do you think it goes into that? Like, where does it cross a line between being, you know, kind of fair satire, but maybe just being a kind of unfair, irresponsible uh, for the fandom? If there is a way, what do you think? I guess it's the invitation of the fans, really, because the ones who really, really know Dragon Ball, they will get all the in-jokes and everything, especially when it comes to characters and I guess plot points because uh, like one example I can think of is uh, I think most people interpret like Krillin as like, like you know, the, oh Krillin always dies, but if you think about it, so did everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the times that Krillin died, like, so did other people. I mean, it's not like he was the only one, <laughs> and e true. even then, it never made sense to me because there was the only time he died in Z was against Frieza. Well, boo. And if you count boo, boo yeah, I'll count boo later, but uh, but yeah, everybody died in boo. I mean, the whole planet actually, died. <laughs> actually, if you think about it, yeah, you're right. Up until mo from like two thirds or three fourths of the series, Krillin died once in Z, which is all people knew about. Goku died twice. Doesn't that technically make him more of a loser? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know why the whole Krillin loser things came from, especially if the only way they could validate that point if they knew you know Dragon Ball knowledge beforehand when he was killed which by they did. Tambourine, but. No, so I, Nobody, I never understood where that mentality came from. It a... Is it just because he's little and he... I mean, and people... Most of Jake... I remember when I was a kid, people joked that Krillin sucked because he gets taken down in one hit. Like, sometimes, but most of the time, no. He, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frieza a couple times. Did, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he lasted a little bit longer. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think... I don't know, man. I, I think he yeah. was... So, I, don't, I don't know. Where, where I was going with this is that uh, in Team Four Star... Well... This scene always kind of bugged me as a kid where, uh, where I was kind of curious like how they would interpret this scene where Krillin was, um, you know, when he pushes a switch. Because I never really knew like how fans really felt about that scene where he didn't kill 18. You know, you know, you want to know something here? Uh, that is one scene that has always kind of bothered me a little bit because I feel like it can be explained. But not very well. I'll give you my brief theory on it. Okay. Krillin, in that moment, it was his responsibility to turn off the androids, deactivate them, maybe destroy them because the entire world at stake. And, okay, I feel like it's... He's a, I really do think he's a strong character and I, and in terms of his characterization. you know, And I think he would be willing to do something like that in most situations. I really do. And I feel like it just comes down to, okay, he fell in love with her. But he didn't really know her. She was a pretty face, really. And, and you could make the argument that, okay, Trun Trunks did say that they weren't the same androids and there were differences and they didn't kill his friends when they could have. Maybe he thought there was a chance to talk them out of it. But in that situation, and with so much at stake, is it just that he, you know, had a moment of weakness because she was a woman and a pretty face? It's just, it's a moment of kind of random writing that I... I, it's kind of explainable and it's interesting, but they never really go into it enough. It just seems kind of forced and a, and a little dumb. I'm like, Krillin, why? Like, uh, I, I don't know. It's, yeah, because I, the only reason that makes sense is because of later on, because, you know, they end up 
being together but in that moment there was like really no previous interaction it was just like the kiss on the cheek and that was it <laughs> Much. Yeah, so I was really wondering how Team Four Star was gonna handle that, but I guess they were stumped also because all they did was like um, make the uh, the f- the flirting like make it a, like ongoing at least from 18's perspective. It's like, hey, hey, it's a cute one. <laughs> then <laughs> it's yeah. just like you know, yeah, I mean, it just which does, is it fine, just happens. <laughs> but there was like, I guess there was chemistry, and I mean, it's it was there obviously, but. There wasn't enough dialogue interplay and or even mental stuff like no, I remember like no, oh man like I can't do this because like I don't it just seems kind of shallow like really man no, you just uh, you just got a boner and, and that was it you were yeah, gonna risk your friends because yeah no you know I mean you're going off a of theory here she's still a theoretically a killing machine that if Cell absorbs her everything's at stake like you're not as bad as Vegeta with the dumb moves but you're pretty close right now man yeah because yeah, no, the the he, the whole. I don't know, like, the whole thing felt like maybe you could probably justify with humanitarian aspects, but even then, it's like, where did that, uh, it, that came from? <laughs> it just really comes out of nowhere, and then, uh, I don't know, that's why I was kind of hoping they would, I was kind of wondering, like, they, if people ever hated Krillin for doing that, or people thought it was stupid for him doing that, but then, look what happened uh... in the end, so... It's pretty glossed over in conversation. People don't typically bring that up too much. It's kind of like such an odd moment, really. <laughs> the more I... it is a really weird moment. I do agree. And I'm like, the, it's because the, the other one that I never understood was the whole Yamcha thing. Also, like saying like, oh, Yamcha always loses, but you guys only seen him fight one time, and that was against the Cyberman. <laughs> and I think the whole reason why people hate him is because it was a. A Cyberman, but if you think about it another way, the Cybermen are fucking scary creatures because you got Demon King Piccolo, Radix level people that could grow out of nowhere and destroy yeah. planets. But the reason why it looks inferior is because Radix, you know, got defeated so early, and then in a way it seems kind of silly that Radix did seem kind of pointless as a henchman when they could just grow a Cyberman. <laughs> Which is a joke they make. Yeah, you so know, we get... and I, it's, well, that's the thing I think is that people forget the the textual context of these things. Is that yeah, you're right. They they do seem kind of silly. Like oh man, Cybermen are so weak. Yeah, in terms of the entire series, sure. But at that moment, you got to remember one of the big differences that people may not realize because a lot of them didn't see the first part is that at Dragon Ball you had that biggest fight, which was getting to touching on Z levels between Goku and Piccolo. And Piccolo was, like, the most powerful guy at that point, and nobody could touch him. And then some guy who's just a flunky for some other guys, who are just flunkies for other guys, is himself powerful enough that the two strongest people, combined with the help of Gohan, barely were able to defeat him. And you've got people that could just pop out, little demon monster things that could kill you. Like, these were the strongest heroes in the world at the time, and they ha- they were dealing with a massive scale of power. So within the context of the arc, it was real scary, and at that time... A Cyberman was was lucky. I mean, like for instance, like you know, Krillin being able to take out a couple of those guys—that's a big deal. Yeah, it really is. Like you know, it's, it's a big deal. He took out five Maddoxes, five ten Demon King Piccolos in that shot. <laughs> it's... Seriously, man, and Piccolo knew not to mess around with them. Take them out quick, you know. Mm. Like they, yeah, they they're the lowest on the totem pole, but it doesn't mean they're not dangerous. They freaking they can freaking shoot acid out of their brains, yeah, man. That's I mean, they're, scary. They're scary. <laughs> How do they do that? I mean, their brain fucking splits open. Ugh. The nasty. little demon guys, like that's that's scary, man. They're, they're creepy, and you just grow them. I want to learn more about Cybermen. How they find those things? How they make de- like what they do? You know, like now. Nah, but you're right, Yamchi. You're right. That's the only time you really get to see him in. Well, okay, you did see him get taken down by Doctor Zero, but that's kind of unfair. That the power gap was too much, yeah. and he wasn't training. I think I think the hate with Yamcha is that he does kind of whine a bit more. He does give up a little bit more, but I don't know. He, he I think he's, if you really take the first part into account, he really is an important character. And I, I don't hate him as much as some people do, but it's easy to because he was up kind of towards the bottom and he, he kind of gave up as a character, I think. He, I think he doesn't really try as much. I guess it's the whole Frieza incident, like with, the, with King Cole, that kind of like... Yeah, he was he was so, he was such, you know... Yeah, but I do remember Team Four Star mentioning him, mentioning in that scene where like, hey, if he wasn't like chickening, I'd be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's the thing I don't get too is that Krillin was afraid too, a lot of the time, but Yamcha gets all the flack. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, especially, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, shouldn't Krillin be more scary? Because he's the one that got <laughs> stabbed and yeah, killed by him. He was scary, but yeah, Yamcha's like, oh, man. You know? And I know, actually, to be honest, this is the purpose of Yamcha, though. Uh, Yamcha and Krillin and some of the other human characters, know, despite their power, they are kind of to gauge that level that we, the audience, feel like, oh, wow, these guys are dangerous. For most of us, yeah. this is going to be like life or death, yeah, but you know, for, more so than the other guys. Yeah, but the thing is, the problem with Yamcha is that they never really gave him any victories to begin with to be used as the uh, the test guinea pig character. That's true. They just kind of use him as cannon fodder, and, and he's like, he knows it. He knows what his writing purpose <laughs> that's is. That's kind of one thing I don't like in Super is that they're trying, like, I feel like Super with Yamcha, they're going in the Sonic route, or just making fun of themselves rather than improving themselves. Because, like, in one of the recent episodes of the baseball where he ends up, uh, you know, not doing doing much either. And then by the end of it, he's, like, nearly dead. <laughs> I know, but it's it's at least they were giving him some fun, you know? Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of their episodes could be done better. Like, like the timbre, like the Krillin with timbre, you know, the recent episode with Krillin. I just never understood, like, why would you end it with Nappa? Why not with Tambourine? Yeah, I, I didn't get that either, like, because... You know, if there was any, like, fear he had to overcome, it would be Tambourine. His first, like, defeat, his first death, you know, like, that would haunt him forever. That would make more sense, but they then, they, they were they definitely were going for that, but they didn't really have him say, like, anything. this is my fear, Tambourine, this is... I mean, we know as an audience why it's important, but we need to see Krillin go through that in his mind. I mean, it wasn't bad. Like, I'm glad they had those episodes, but they probably could have been done a little better. Yeah. It was I mean, very much like Star Wars Yoda facing your fear against Darth Vader in the cave yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> Very similar. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Bob I, I did like some of the character stuff. Like, Gohan being great, Sam and movie was, was pretty fun. And we least. have become a Dragon Ball podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? At least we're talking about some stuff, you know? Uh, I guess. Now the only salvation is everything goes recording smoothly. Well, well, you know, you could probably divide it up a couple of different ways. Probably. But if you want to, we can wrap it up. And we had a, <laughs> at least a couple of good discussions. Yeah, I feel like I need to end it off with something Dragon Ball while we're still on this fucking topic. All right. Yeah, All right. Um, the, the other thing I had annoyed me with that episode is that none of the villains talked. They were just like non-speaking cameos. And I'm like, I always hated that in anything. Non-speaking cameos. Fucking. Just, like, uh... Yeah, I agree. They, they, Maybe they just... Didn't want to have any of the people recording the booth that day, but you're right. They should have had them talk, and you know. And I think I don't know if I brought this up to you, but I thought the animation in that episode, of course, with Super, it was lacking a little bit. Like, oh, we've got a twenty badly drawn freezes. Yeah, to me, the worst one was like the second half with uh, when Hit coming back. To me, that looked terrible. But how do you feel about the good old, you know, make them bigger to make them worse? <laughs> oh, they're so much stronger because they're bigger yeah i don't know there's so much i don't know so much super i'm just like scratching my head because that hit episode i still can't get over the fact that they used the drama Ball evolution logic to cpr his heart with a key blast yeah yeah that that wasn't good i think uh, the one thing i did like about that episode though was that it's implementing something i hope we'll see more of in that there was certain strategy like it was kind of funny but goku for once goku being the most powerful guy there wouldn't have helped in the situation because even though he could have defeated those people, those fake villains, by just powering up and using a key blast or, or even just the aura front that he produced, he because Nimbus was there and he didn't want to kill Nimbus, it was Krillin who actually being smaller and more precise who actually was useful there. So I liked that. I liked showing that for once, yeah. being the most powerful guy was not always a solution. And yes, I know that does kind of go against the main reason why Dragon Ball is popular. But sometimes you need to show that there are other ways to defeat the bad guy than just punching him harder. Because and th that is the key thing I, that I think is the, is the cool thing. I'm sorry. It's the cool thing that made Dragon Ball interesting in those early arcs is that when you fought people, you had techniques. And being stronger was not always the sure win. No, but you, you, know, what movie, I, you know what movie clearly says that? You know, punch him harder. <laughs> Like, it's a uh, cooler. Yeah, Return of Cooler. Return of Cooler. I figured out how we beat him. How? Punch, Punch him harder. Him harder. Well, to be fair, Hero, there was a teeny bit of strategy in the actual dub. Piccolo said you have to hit them harder, put all your energy.
energy into one punch at specific points of the armor. So <laughs> it was a little more than just no. punch him harder, but it, but it was basically just punch him harder. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's but you know what I'm saying, though. It's, it's just, I, I know that's ultimately what it is, but I just, I want a little more strategy. I want a little more martial arts, and I want a story that requires more than just the over-ridiculous power-ups like Z was talking about mm. in his, his stream with you know, Super Saiyan Red, Blue, Purple. Like, my, my friends and I were talking in one of our podcasts, let's, we've been, we've been complaining about it for a while, but like, for a long time now, pretty much since the Boo Saga, even before then, really, but it's always been the Goku Vegeta show. Like, let's, let's get other people to do stuff again. Like, you know, there are other characters. Ugh. Sorry, I'm yeah. ranting a bit now. We we'll probably ended like in ten minutes. Then I guess because <laughs> somebody tells me like the Dragon Ball thing you could go on forever. Uh, you know, it. You, dude, we did. Did we do like a four-hour podcast with dead ones? I think so. It was a long. It was Green Clan days. <laughs> we should have called it the long cast. <laughs> the, long, okay. the long Dragon Ball. I don't know. Dragon Ball is always a thing that. I, I swear, I, I, I do think that I enjoy talking more about it than actually watching it. I, don't know I do too. I mean, I want to kind of go back and, and watch it more, but I don't have the time as much. Uh, so, so I know, I guess Dragon Ball, I know you said it's always been important to you, but I noticed you mentioned that it's kind of like gotten much lower in your rankings for favorite series. <sighs> you know, what, what were we going to ask with that? Like, well, like why? Why is that? Or, or do you think that'll change again or, or what I, I don't know if it will change up because of because of all the new material that we're getting so because so you think you're, you're taking super as kind of part of the equation for why it might not be as big yeah i think because i've just been so disappointed with it really more than anything i mean you, you know it's a sad day when you like the comedy episodes more than the actual action one that, well, that's what I said, man. My favorite stuff, honestly, has been some of these little character episodes, like more than the actual arcs, because the arcs haven't really been that great. I don't know, because I'm thinking like, because I, I kind of have ideas to make Dragon Ball in a different direction, but it would be a much more different show. It would be like very adult, because I mean, like the whole Krillin story, I would like to, like Krillin and Yamcha, and I guess to, all the human characters in general, I could picture better ideas to make them work and even gohan with this whole like relationship thing and Go maybe goku's thinking about like uh i don't know i, I kind of like what to do with vegeta a little bit with the whole you know you know like she's pregnant i gotta stay here and the baby can come any minute but at the same time no, it does feel like kind of weird seeing it, that there we it is weird but at least his character's developed you yeah. know at least he's he's different than he started you know Whereas Goku is kind of going backwards. Goku is going. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not liking Goku anymore, man. He he is to, there. I I know you. It's one of those things where you, you have to kind of take into account what's going on outside of the story with the writing versus how you're actually watching it. Hmm. But I'm just like, you know, you, I just feel like they're intent. He's just. <sighs> they're intentionally fucking like him he's, up. He's, he's not bad. He's not well written right now. No, he's not at all. He's, he's definitely the character that suffers the most out of everybody. It's like, it's, like people are, are like, you know, complaining about Gohan. But what about Goku? Goku is like, he's not God. there anymore. <laughs> barely. It's like, what happened? To Goku him? died. <laughs> he died. He died a long time ago. The real Goku has been left behind. He's been replaced by Goku Black the whole time. <laughs> that some people have had that theory that maybe this isn't real Goku. <laughs> oh, maybe it's no. an, it is like an evil Goku. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's Captain Ginyu. <laughs> I'll destroy the universe. Like, and I, I didn't even think about it. Like, I was kind of angry initially because I'm like, oh, man, you're risking the entire universe again. But okay, whatever. I guess they could technically wish them back with the Dragon Balls, even though it's messed up. And then I realized something. Theoretically, if they did lose this tournament, then their universe gets wiped out, and so do their Dragon Balls. So bad, you know? Real bad. Yeah. Wait. You know what I want, though? Wow. All right. Okay, here, here's, here's, here's a one question for you about it. As far as the new arcs go, this next arc, okay, or if there are any more future ones for Super, if they had to bring one character back no. to do something interesting, who do you think they should bring back? Uh, I'm thinking Gohan, really, because <laughs> I, I kind of want to say Master Roshi, too, but I think Gohan's the one that needs it more, all because of many years ago, 
with the whole Majin Buu thing, like it felt like he should have been the next guy. It really did. They yeah. were building up to it for a long time. Yeah, well, I, I think it, it's like, let's try to recreate that ending, only this time, you know, Goku actually dies and Gohan, you know, saves the day. <laughs> no, you know, honestly, man, you know, and I've, I've said this a number of times before, and I'll say it again, I, I know that, you know, fan fan pressure or people accepting it, like, they, they didn't mm-hmm. want to, but, go, like, the whole Z section, Gohan was basically the main character, and they were hinting from the first episode that that he had this great power within him, and I'm okay with him struggling with being a warrior and not being his dad, but I'm okay with him finding a balance, he can be the corny guy, he can be the scholar, he can be the doctor, like a superhero, and actually be the good guy at the same time, accepting, you know, the classic with great power comes great responsibility, like, let's have that happen, Goku has to pass the torch on because... Gohan, Gohan, we know potentially has more power. You know, let's, he's a better main character. You know, let's, let's have him come back, for real. Because my, one of my favorite things, even though I'm not a huge fan of the Boo arc, up to a certain point, pretty much this point, is when Gohan has his mystic power up, comes back, and he's just in full serious mode, and he says, Boo, I'm here to kill you. Like, you know, that is just so awesome. And he just pe- destroys him. You know, one last battle. It's like, okay, we've got the new hero now. He's taken his mantle, finally. Like, we, we need that again. You know, Gohan was awesome, and he hasn't been for a long time. And it, he is one of those characters where I will say that the power-up does kind of matter. I mean, they can keep the conflict for his character, which is interesting, but it was going so well, and then it just got kind of kind of lost. More so if you throw in, like, the federal material, like, with Garlic Jr. <laughs> so... <laughs> Exactly. He had his moments, you know, which the funny thing about the Garlic Jr. stuff is that even though it technically, I guess, isn't canon, it, it's one of the few things that easily could be canon. Yeah. You know? He just slips in there. He's like, I'm Chuck Huber. I'm slipping in. Chuck slipping Huber. <laughs> yeah, let's make it five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, you have to do some of the talking, Hero. What, what are some final thoughts about Dragon Ball in general that you would like to share? Oh, I don't know, man. There's so much... So much shit recently. <laughs> well, you know, actually, um, how, how do you feel about Garlic Jr.? Do you still hate him? I know you said you didn't like him that much, but I always thought he was kind of a nice uh, variation. Uh, I think he's okay. Like, the, the way he's at is that... Uh, well, the thing is, I like listening to him in either voice because there's a benefit in both versions. Yeah, actually, you know, um, it's interesting, but Garlic Jr., of course, was always, like, the most hated arc, even back in the day. But I remember when I started to get into Dragon Ball again more seriously, I purchased some of the orange bricks, and I had never really listened to too much of it in Japanese, but I said, hey, I'm going to try and listen to, you know, like, the Garlic Jr. arc, which I always thought was kind of interesting in Japanese, and I was thinking, it was the first time where I was like, wow, this, comparing the Japanese dub with the the voice acting and the script and the soundtrack to the original Funimation dub, oh, God, it was, it was such a much darker, more serious, more intelligent-seeming series to me. <laughs> and I was like, wow, these are two totally different shows, which kind of goes back to our previous discussion about fan perception. Like, you're watching the same show, but it's a very different show. Yeah. Well, I remember the Garlic Jr. seemed really scary. It was, it was pretty cool. Oh, because uh, in the Japanese, he is, uh, well, at least in the movie, in the movie version, he's actually voiced by Kenshiro. <laughs> Kenshiro. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, that's yeah. So well, Akira Kamiya voiced him there, but yeah. Nice. But um. Oh, did you yeah, actually yeah. catch that uh Cell versus Kenshiro oh. fight? Yeah, I did. That was pretty awesome. It was. I wonder if people are mad. <laughs> no, I, I'm okay with it because no, I'm pretty like, sure he's got people. those pressure points, man, and, and it sells well, lots of human DNA, so... Well, <laughs> technically it wouldn't work right because it probably wouldn't be in the right spot, but, eh, but then again, whatever. <laughs> ah, heck with it. It was still awesome. Yeah, I think the reason they went with that joke is because of... Well, I think of two reasons. One is because that's a good footage... There's already a good piece of footage of Cell blowing up, so not much of yes. there. And two is that... In the recent, like, Jump Ultimate Stars, they, they kind of mention Kenshiro from time to time, so... So I guess it's that, and then nobody knows who he is. <laughs> they'll, they'll look him up, and hey, more people will get in the roster. Yeah, hopefully. Well, then again, that's the reason why I gotta start doing character vids. 
I was about to ask. You should do a couple more character now. So you've got a couple though. You've got to. You're still gonna do the Wall Manly list. Yeah, I'm still doing it. People have been asking that because I've just been super slow with that. Because I need to watch. Uh, well, I need to watch Blade Runner first and then con- continue again. Blade that. You gotta say it right though. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. <laughs> Blade Runner. Blade. Yeah, I mean that's awesome. Though. You'll, you'll enjoy Runner. that. Lot. Blade Runner had a lot of influence on anime, especially like the cyberpunk stuff in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, a lot of influence, Akira, all that stuff. Yeah. So, anyways, Dragon Ball to wrap this up. Dragon I, I, I Ball know, is. Like, it, it's kind of weird. I was gone like down so much because it was like one of my most favorite things ever. And it's not like something that I think like, oh, I grew out of it. No, it's not that. It's like something about it just. Something felt got lost along the way because Dragon Ball is what got me in and got me in again, but for some reason it's not staying there. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it could me, be like Dra- it, I mean, uh, it, it Dragon Ball is pretty awesome still, but I, I just haven't been able to go back to it as much. I don't know, Recent I stuff hasn't impressed. been impressing me too much. Yeah, I guess I just haven't really been impressed or wowed. Don't be like, yeah, wow, that was cool, <laughs> but. Uh, and then again, I kind of want the characters to, since we have the opportunity to keep, make this, keep the story going, like, it makes me think that either one, to make the characters grow up and, you know, some attempts have been doing that, or two, like, I kind of wish there wasn't any continuation, because then, you know, they could fuck it up <laughs> any more than it was. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, on one hand, I agree with you, it's like, you, you want to say it's kind of awesome that the fandom is strong enough to make new stuff but since it's not as good as the old stuff you're like can we just talk about how great that it was and it didn't really need anything else because it kind of wrapped up well you know it's like it's it's the double-edged sword man you know it's, it, there's always two sides dragon ball gotta get those dragon balls gotta get them all gotta get those dragon balls yeah because i mean like balls because that series is like everyone's first anime you know it's like their first love <laughs> <laughs> it's kind a Dragon Ball of, sweetheart, um, man. It stays there. It's supposed to stay there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I do feel that my interest in other shows, old types of series, is probably the, one of the reasons why it's gone down, even in terms of shonen. Because well, I admit Toriyama has never been like the most enthusiastic about manga in general, but he, he did some pretty good stuff on his own. Well, well, I say on his own, but there's always like some editor involved, I guess. But I mean, look at him—he created this phenomenon. But who knows? Maybe the reason why this phenomenon became this great is because of I don't know, just solely because of the superficial action, rather than what's going on behind the scenes. So. I don't. I don't know. I. I guess. I mean, like I said, I, I think that the initial hook is that over-the-top action, but. At the same time, I, I think there has to be a little more to it than that mm. to kind of keep people coming back. But maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe people only care about the superficial stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, well, that's definitely the main draw. But uh, I, don't I do know. feel like the way it's perceived. <laughs> it can get kind of frustrating. I don't know. I do feel like the way it's been perceived recently is, is also one of the reasons why I don't like it as much. But what do you mean? Uh, you know how the main drama ball stereotype is like you know it's just all oh, people screaming, <laughs> like they, they stand still for like so many episodes and uh, all that it's shit. Not even that way at all anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's not that no, well, no, not anymore because of Kai and the new super. At least, at least super they don't go slow, but but even then, I feel like super is becoming what the, it's becoming the stereotype, a kind of nice stereotype. That's my worry, and then I feel like uh, I don't know. Like I feel, I always felt there was more, and it's only when I'm writing things down, like actually thinking about the characters I'm talking about, that I kind of realize there's probably a little more to it. But more than likely, Toriyama didn't even realize it himself, or who knows? <laughs> maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But he's got something. He's got. He definitely has talent for stuff. I mean, I think one of the other things that made Job also appealing was the visuals, because every character looks every, all the villains like. I think that's kind of an interesting trait that all the big baddies don't have hair. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Well, I guess except for, you know, the Saiyans. Yeah, I mean, you got Frieza, Cell, and Boo. It's like, they're not really, not exact. They're kind of human shaped, but at the same time, they're not. So, they're all alien ish. Yeah, well, you go from alien science project and Jin. <laughs> so. Demon, genie thing, yeah. 
Yeah. Bubblegum Demon Genie. <laughs> Bumblegum Demon Genie, look out! <laughs> Sounds like an attack. It's yeah. like a JoJo attack or something. Uh, well, you never know. I mean, you have attacks like fucking Merry Go Round Gum and. <laughs> like, what was the name Bungie of the other? Gum. Double Sunday. <laughs> Double Sunday. Well, those Saturday are Crash! Yeah. Well, I don't know. Dark, Dark Wall's like. Yeah. I feel like we need to stop now and talk about that for another day. Like. Like, what happened? Like, why don't I like it as much anymore? No, well, that, that's definitely a topic we can we can look into, but uh, hopefully there'll be good things. You know, well, there, there's still good things. Some good elements, at least. Yeah. Ugh, oh, shit. Wanna... But uh, we can wrap that up there for the video. We'll, we'll wrap it up there. Yeah, it's gone on for too long now. 